This is The Convergence. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of The Convergence. Today, we are literally connecting the four corners of the globe uh, with Simon Hudson, who is currently in Dubai, right? All right. (laughs) So we're we're Arizona to Dubai. We've got the two desert connections. Um, Simon, it's great to have you on the show. And I'm really excited to hear about cheese because we've talked on this show multiple times about NFTs and about the NFT artwork and how, uh, you know, artists like Justin Pierce, who who I'm 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 a art collector and I collect a lot of Justin's work, how he's transitioned over into, into the NFT space. But I don't think we've had anybody that's talked about photography and I will be honest as a, as a sort of premise, uh, you know, I, my wife and I collect art. We have over a hundred pieces hanging in our home right now. I think we only have about four uh, uh, pieces of photography. And a lot of that is just because we're like original things. Um, we don't, we don't, there's nothing in this house that's been mass produced. And the challenge is when it comes to photography, for the most part, it's, there's no way to really know if it's original. <laughs> so when I saw what you were doing with cheese, I got excited because I thought, well, this is a way to actually verify that through blockchain uh, and to, to, you know, to create an NFT that maybe even even associated with a physical object that, you know, can provide that sort of guarantee and, and verification. So I don't want to get too far off on a tangent, but thank you for joining me, Simon. Uh, welcome to the show. And tell me a little bit about Cheese. Where did you come up with this idea and what is the premise and the, the thought process behind it? Yeah, well, firstly, thank you for having me. It's great to uh, connect. And, and you know, like I say, four corners of the world, according to Dubai. <laughs> yeah. um, so Cheese was actually born out of a need back in 2017 when my daughter was born. Um, the first version of the product was trying to solve an issue where people, families across the globe are sharing photos of children, loved ones, and tend to use messaging apps like iMessage, WhatsApp. They became very busy, very noisy. It was very difficult to make organization. So the version one of Cheese came around where we were organizing photography for friends and family. If you imagine like a Slack for for photography. (laughs) This was the product up until 2020 when obviously the world went into lockdown. We saw a big decline in usage because people were not really going anywhere or taking any photos. And then we stumbled across NFTs and blockchain Mm -hmm. mid-2020. All the infrastructure was there. The branding, obviously, cheese comes from the name where you say cheese before taking a photo. The majority of the world still use that today. So we ended up making a pivot to moving the business into the direction of becoming a photo-centric NFT platform. Um, What we wanted to do was really look at how the history of the photo has evolved from the negative to the JPEG and what's next for the journey of a photo. We felt that there was an opportunity there. The NFT world was still very new. I think that we were one of the very first companies that were joined join the Flow blockchain, which is who we're built on. So we wanted to just really understand what the problems with photography were, like you just said before about having something that's mass produced. How can NFT and blockchain technology solve that? And we're aiming to become the number one go-to place for photography on the blockchain. Nice. And is that, uh, you know, from from a commercial, is that more from a commercial perspective or is this for everybody, right? Where they can, they can go and create their NFTs and and, OpenSea and some of these other environments. I think what they've unfortunately become sort of, you know, bogged down with is a bunch of low quality clip art, (laughs) you know, that somebody produced on Fiverr and they're trying to make a quick buck on this. I think that's a little bit different with photography because the skill is very obvious and apparent in, uh, you know, in, in a photograph. How, how do you see that sort of working, that balance between the two? Or is there a balance? Is there a side that on that that you're following more than the other? I mean, it's a good question surrounding the competitors like OpenSea and Rarible in the different marketplaces. And I think yeah. that our USP in the photography focus only is that we can really build features and iterations that are really dedicated to photography. Platforms like OpenSea won't have properties such as Aperture, ISO, where the geolocation of the photo was taken, the camera it was taken on. If you've ever taken a photo on your iPhone and you press the information button, you can see a map of where you took it, what camera it was taken on, what ISO, what size, what resolution. None of that is transitioning from camera to chain when you're using platforms like OpenSea or Rarible. So oh, what we've done is is that we've focused purely on photography to be able to understand using a, a private network of photographers who we've been working with to see what they actually want to do. And I think that when you've got a, a different category of photographers from the Instagrammer to the professional Getty Images photographer, 
there's a huge gap of how that is used as a camera from a digital SLR, huge megapixel to an iPhone 14 Pro Max with all of the bells and the whistles. What we wanted to do is understand and see how each photographer used the device, whether it be a DSLR or a phone. What we found was that if you're a company like OpenSea, you have a board ape, you have a an Azuki, you have a doodle, and then you have a photo by um, Drifter Shoots who where my vans go, and they're alongside each other. But the features and the properties that are listed for the artwork is not really the same for the photograph. And the photograph basically doesn't have all of the luxury of showcasing the metadata for that photo. And, and the metadata of a photo is really what's the power behind the photo. You as a photographer dig deep in and you look and see what the ISO was of a photographer that you follow, what aperture they used, what f-stop they used, all of the, really the navigation of the camera. And that changed the photo entirely. So we focus very heavily on actually building a platform dedicated to the photographer to help them understand what they're, you know, what they're wanting, wanting to do and bring the images on chain. That makes a lot of sense. And I think when you think about even the collectors of art and those people that collect photography versus art, uh, usually those studios are not the same. R rarely do you find a photography studio and an art studio in the same space. It's a different collector. It's a different mindset. It's a, it's a different way of approaching the collecting. It's a different way of display. I mean, there is, it's a very, very different. I can't imagine, you know, uh, you know, I, I have all these different lights in this, in this studio here that lights up all these different pieces of artwork. You, you don't really do that with photography. And I even think the, the original photography we have hanging in our house, it, it sort of speaks for its own. Whereas in this instance, the artist actually said to me, let's throw a little bit of red light on this, a little bit of blue light here, a little bit of gold over in this area. So it, it is really a different, a different format. And for that, I think it does require a completely different approach. I, I also tend to find that folks that collect photography uh, tend to be amateur photographers themselves. So they are very interested in that metadata, where to me, I'm looking at my Kool-Aid man here and I'm going, I don't know, paint on canvas? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't really care if it's Sharpie or paint or what it is. I'm buying it for the what it says to me and what it represents, where photography may be a little bit different. And I, I can see that. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so what, tell me a little bit maybe about the business model. How, how do you, uh, is this really about becoming sort of the open sea of photography or where do you sort of see cheese going? So really Cheese is built for the creator economy where we're wanting to work with photographers and people to understand where this is heading. I think, you know, coming back to what you just said about putting different colored lights on the artwork on the wall. Yes, we don't see that if a photograph is hung on our wall and we don't really light up photographs, artwork we do. But if you look at photographs in the digital aspect, Instagram became Instagram because of filters. Filters, filters yes. Are essentially the digital lighting and the the appearance that you have changes they have so many different filters out now and if you look on instagram as well there's a lot of apps that are promoting the different features and functionalities how can you manipulate a photo how can you make it 3d so it's really taking a photo and it becoming a piece of art so from us and the business model we have a number of verticals the first is the marketplace which is really a as you would see a standard marketplace for people to sell collections photographers can list their photos they can put them in additions, they can put them into collection sizes and, and do everything you would expect. But the thing that people tend to forget is that when you talk about NFTs and you talk about photos, people immediately think of a photo collection. But mm. everything that we have around us that we purchase is starting off with a photo. From buying an Apple Watch, an iPhone, a house or a car, you go onto the websites and you look at the property and you see it first and foremost as a photo. Even if you want to go and buy a Tesla, you look on tesla.com and you see the car as a photo. Mm -hmm. So our mindset is not just to build a product that people are thinking right now in today's mindset of this is a marketplace for photographers who go and make collections of landscapes or animals. This is about looking to see how does this evolution of technology and photography dovetail together. By doing that, what we've done is, is we've actually taken a step back in time and look at how the JPEG came about. So the JPEG stands for Joint Photography Expert Group, which is a group of brands and a group of companies in 92, 93 that came together to try and figure out how they can take it from a physical negative into a digital reproduction of that photo. Obviously, once that was achieved, they would then know that the 
transportation of a photo from A to B or the replication of a photo from A, B, C to D was a lot easier. If you think of how that used to be from a negative perspective, you had to reprint, 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 and you only had the physical negative. So if we look at where we are now, you don't say to me, hey, Simon, please send me a JPEG. You're just like, hey, send me a photo. The term JPEG has gone. It's been lost. And I think that the term .NFT is really an extension like .JPEG. In the next two or three years, it will be like, hey, send me a photo. And it'll be like, oh, do you want that to be on-chain or off-chain? It's not really going to be as an NFT. The on-chain aspect of it really gives it a feeling of provenance and authenticity. And I think that if you're selling a house, you've got a house for sale here and a house for sale here, this is off-chain and this is on-chain you're automatically, as time goes on and people understand the security of the chain, you would much prefer to buy a house from a website that's showcasing photos of a house that are on chain because there's proof, there's provenance. And so for us, our business model is really having the standards in place, such as the marketplace and the way that you would expect to make fees from commissions and fees per sale, but also look at what is coming and what is not there yet and how can we innovate using the technology and the platform we have and the photography industry as it transitions from a .jpeg to a .nft. All right, I want to chat with you for a minute or two about central business development. They're my sponsor and underwriter here at the show, and, and I think it's important to spend a little bit of time understanding what they do because if you're listening, you're probably interested in this marketplace and you maybe even have an idea. <laughs> so one of the things I really like about Ryan and the team at Central is that they are really entrepreneurs. They aren't just a development firm that sits there and takes orders from big companies of, hey, we need you to build this out. They really are partners. Uh, I've seen this with them now multiple times. I've uh, had listeners of this show that have reached out to them and, and created projects with them. I've had guests of the show create uh, relationships with central business development. And what they all have really found is that there's this great opportunity to be an entrepreneur with them where you can approach them with an idea and say, hey, here's what we were thinking and really get a jam session and a whiteboard session with these guys and, and figure out how do you take that idea and make it a reality if it's possible or is that uh, even an idea that should be considered in blockchain just yet? That's what I like about what Central does. So I would encourage you to check out centralbusinessdevelopment.com. Uh, reach out to them, even if it's just, hey, look, we're, we're, we're wondering how, I don't know, how blockchain is going to affect our real estate investment firm in the future. And you want to just have that time chatting with folks that understand and know this industry. And, and maybe there's a project to be created there for you. Maybe there's an opportunity to be an entrepreneur out inside your industry and create uh, something new and exciting that will not only affect your business and how it works into the future, but might be a disruptor to other industries as well. Hmm. It's really the transition even from analog to digital I keep thinking about too, right? You know, where, uh, and, and I'm old enough to remember when when there wasn't digital photography. <laughs> and I, I don't think many people today remember that, but it was a very different world and it was a big transition. And, and now today, I think trying to even buy, I don't know, can you still buy 35 millimeter film? I'm sure you can, but well, but it's become real niche here. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, is that, you know, photographers that shoot on 35 millimeter film actually charge a lot more because it's a lot more retro and a lot more kind of creative mm -hmm. than snapping on your iPhone. So yeah. um, I think that we are going to see that transition. But yeah, the, from the technology, if you look at the phone companies promoting new devices, the main thing they all talk about is how powerful the new camera is. Right. That's a great point. And I don't take a lot of, uh, you know, photographs that I would, that I would say are Instagram worthy. So to me, even, even the last couple updates of the iPhone, I'm like, well, you, you know, early on when I was a big tech adopter, I was always have to get the latest and greatest. Now I'm like, why do I need to, the only main difference anymore is the camera. It's yeah. like, you know, what, what am I taking pictures of my dog playing in the backyard? You know, for me, it's not a big deal, but I can see how that makes sense. Where, where do you see this marketplace going? I'm, I'm so glad to hear that you're here in the web three space, because I think, you know, like we talk about so much on the show, it is about utility. If you are looking at things in the Web3 space and they don't have a utility, they don't have a purpose, a business case, they don't have a reason for existing, uh, you probably are looking at a meme, right? But yeah. but here you've got a real purpose and you can see, I think anybody 
can see how this can change the whole world around photography. Where do you see the future? I, you know, I guess it's that what's the five year plan? Where, where do you see this marketplace going? And I, you know, NFTs right now are have a little bit of a, 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 a of a negative connotation around them, but but I think it's like the dot com crash. Right? That wasn't the end of the dot com. Uh, that was actually the beginning of the dot com, and I think a lot of that is what comes out of the ashes in this. So, where do you, Simon? Where do you see the market heading when it comes to NFTs and Web three? I think that the way we're positioning it right now with NFTs, there are so many people that have made a lot of money and a lot of people that have lost a lot of money that the word NFT has got a bad name. Really simply put, NFT is just a compression of ownership. It reduces the steps from transferring asset A from a person A to person B. It just it, it doesn't mean that we have to go through a number of loopholes and steps to get that transaction done so the term nft really if you remove that it's just an improvement of technology like i said a jpeg has gone from the manual to the digital and i think for, for us especially for photography i think any device that you look at around your home if you don't use your tv for five minutes you get an apple screensaver come on that is moving images or photos the you know the iphone now has the lock screen where you can customize the lock screen Again, photos. When we do Zoom calls, most people use a backdrop. Again, photos. When you use AR and VR and you're going to be putting on the Quest goggles or the Apple Glass, you're going to have digital assets around you. So I think that for us to become a library of photography that people can actually represent and showcase what they have and what they own is going to be something that is quite powerful. But also as well, looking at how traditional models work. Like if you take Amex as an example, you have the black, the gold, the silver, and the Centurion credit card. If you pull out your black American Express card, it flexes wealth. It flexes you have money and it flexes that you have a mm -hmm. titanium card. Well, nobody uses cards anymore. They're all using Apple Pay. Um, mm -hmm. So when you double tap to showcase your card, there is a digital screen in front of you. And the Amex can partner with photography companies to display for photographs, to display pieces of art, etc. So... I think that for us, being able to integrate what we have from a photography aspect and help users bring their images on chain and make them digital assets and digital collectibles, then opens up doors to how we then can showcase these, whether they're in lock screens, whether they're in Zoom backgrounds, whether they're in credit card covers or whatever that might look like. So we just think that the NFT word is a bit of a, a wrong way to approach this, and it's more that this is a new way of transferring a digital photo or an asset from person a to b and see what the options come yeah. out later it's, it's a great point and I, and I hadn't even really thought of you know the three pieces of art that are hanging here right behind me uh i, I purchased those because i saw a photograph of them <laughs> exactly so, so that's the interesting thing is it really it really goes through the entire um you know, cycle where photography is the start of so much. And I think you, you're right. When the physical assets like your, I have friends that have black cards, lots of friends that have platinum cards, I have a platinum card. You know, you use, that's the only card I carry is that platinum card because it, it, it actually has a benefit to it. It has a utility to it. I can present that at the airport and I can go into the, the lounge and eat and drink for free. So, so there's, there's benefits to that, but they're associated with the physical asset, not yet totally with the digital. I can't, I, I don't know. Maybe next time I go to the Centurion Lounge, I'll present my Apple wallet and see what they say. I, I don't think they're going to let me in. <laughs> I think they're going to um, require the physical asset. I think what's interesting, I, as I say, I'm based in Dubai, but I do, do a yeah. lot of a lot of traveling. I, I only ever carry my phone from, you know, even my airline ticket is on the yeah. from getting into different lounges, again, accessing through my phone, using Turo to lock, lock, a lock yeah, and a lock card. Yeah. You know, hotel rooms, again, keys yeah. using Marriott. So everything is really on one device. Now it's on the watch. I think that when you were saying about, you know, the, the pieces of art and the photographs, again, it's about proving the fact that what you're buying is real. So if you yeah. to see that picture of uh, the red art in the background and it was on sale on a website, it was on sale on a Web3 website, which had blockchain certificates, you're going to have a lot more confidence that that is real and that is coming from a, a real source. Again, it's a photo, but you're buying a physical. When you start to think about how that can transition into proving real life problems where we're seeing a lot of issues now with the dating apps such as Tinder and Bumble and Hinge and all of those where people are now saying, 
if you're wanting to use them, you need to have a, a video interview or a video face to have approval to actually prove yeah. that you're not somebody that's going and trying to pretend to be somebody else. Sure. You can put your photos on chain and have them proved by other people and having an NFT asset saying, hey, I own this, this is me. I've already gone through that authenticity and that kind of KYC, if you like, for people. Now that is in my wallet and I can use that on any social media and I don't need to go through that KYC and that approval again. So I think that's kind of somewhere we're heading towards. Yeah. No, I, I can absolutely see that. And it actually brings up a sort of an interesting instance here at our home. We have a couple of uh, pieces of original art from an artist. And when we collected them from her, she was not, you know, she was a starving artist. I mean, I think she actually emailed us and said, I'm actually buying you know, from the money I'm buying gifts for my kids for Christmas, like you made Christmas. And then about a year ago, she reached out and said, Hey, I've become a little bit, you know, uh, I'm getting a, a good following and I have a publisher that wants to do prints of my work. And, uh, would it be possible to do prints of the, of the pieces that you own? Uh, and we, we thought about it and we were like, actually it's good for us, right? Because we own the original and she's going to now start selling prints. But she didn't have to do that. I mean, yeah. you know, there's no there, there's no posterity to that. There, there's no real relationship for the most part between art and, you know, what happens for, for the print side of things. But she just happened to do it because she knew us, right? But uh, but that brings up that same sort of, you know, idea of, of, of this licensing of assets piece that right now can be done very easily behind the scenes. But if you brought blockchain into the equation, it couldn't be done. You could understand the posterity of that document. You could prove ownership. We could show that that was an original piece of artwork that was sold to us without reprint rights. You know, all of those kind of things uh, come into the equation. Interesting stuff. So the future of cheese, I mean, where, where are you at as far as launch? And you've been out into the marketplace for a bit of time under a, a little bit of a different model, but now converted over into this. Is this, are, are, is is the process with cheese of uploading digital photography to the platform to turn it into NFTs or, or is there something maybe a little different? Yeah. So as with any kind of business in any company, we have a roadmap. Some of the roads we follow, some that we don't, depending on how things yeah. run out. I think that yeah. you know, one of the um, people who sits on our board is Mark Randolph, who's the co-founder of Netflix. Yeah, so sure. he, um, he's a fantastic person to, ask ideas and questions from and you know one of the things that he says is that you just have to keep trying things and a good entrepreneur is one of those that is willing to admit defeat and they're willing to admit that you made mistakes and i think that that's something that we're very good at at cheese we build products and we build features we test them and see what works and what doesn't i think that for us when we went to market at the beginning of the year to roll out the initial marketplace crypto was in a very different place eth was at about 4k and yeah. you know, bitcoin was just below 50. Now don't remind me <laughs> yeah and, and i think the yeah. trust the, the really the trust in this space became very negative and i think we all agree if you're in this space we're now coming out the other end mm -hmm. so for us we've built the marketplace we've been working on the ui and how we can actually onboard the masses you know people like my mum, my parents how are they going to go on if there's a picture of princess diana or the queen they want to purchase that how can they simply go and do that and understand the process and maybe they don't even care it's an nft they just love the photo and want to have a limited edition run of one of the queen elizabeth photos so we're trying to work out how we can onboard the masses and also as well payments we've partnered with all crypto providers usdc from any chain credit card we can accept all the major credit cards so for us we've built the marketplace and that's live Next steps are rolling out our own token. We're bringing out our Lens token to market, which will be a reward-based token for people who snap and mint photos, take, basically get paid for taking photos. Then we've got a, a, an update to our mobile app and a couple of other things. But really, it's about learning from what the market is wanting and actually then changing the model based upon how the market adapts and adopts what we bring to the bring to the forefront of what they're seeing. Yeah. Simon, this was really interesting. Thanks so much for being on the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about how they can get a hold of you and find out more about Cheese. Cool. So I'm at Hudson on Twitter, just my surname. Uh, we're at Cheese on all social handles, cheese.com. Uh, head over to any of those. Reach out to me personally. My DMs are open. Um, I'm going to be speaking um, at a number of events over the next few months. So yeah, if you find me in an event, please come and say hi. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for tuning in uh, to this episode of The Convergence. Thanks for listening to The Convergence. If you want more information about the topics you've heard here today, reach out to us at theconvergencepodcast.com.